coming to some more uh, specific definitions. If you look at value, okay, value is defined by customer in terms of specific products and services, okay, and it is what is added. Okay, we we kind of discussed it in terms of uh, you know many examples, and I think sometimes understanding what is value to the customer can be quite challenging. Okay, so you need in in, in uh, I mean we, we we know sometimes it's price. Sometimes it's quality. It's competitive. Yeah. Sometimes it's safety. So if I'm buying a car, or if I'm buying a motorcycle, you know what is the value to the customer? This just depends on the customer. And so there are a lot of uh, what you call studies done on which segment has what value. If I take a cell phone itself, there is different uh, sets of customers have different values out of a cell phone. There's no universal yes. one single type of value for everyone. Although there are basic values. I should be able, it should not, you know, uh, be under repair all the time. It should work when I want to, it should this, it should that. But beyond that, there are varying values. Okay. Then we looked at what value stream is. We saw it's a link to actions, processes, functions, adding value at each stage while transforming inputs to outputs. Okay. We, value stream mapping is a special type of flowchart that uses symbols known as language of link. This is where we are getting it. And process mapping is more detailed, okay, a tool used to improve a process, okay, or a task, if I use the word, within a micro level by identifying added value and eliminating waste at the micro level. So when we say process mapping, it's more of a micro level. When we say value stream mapping, macro it level. can be more at a macro level. Okay, but these are not, uh, what do you say, absolute tools. People use value stream mapping at the micro level also and it, it works because the symbology etc is still applicable but you don't need such a complicated language at the micro level sometimes. Okay, so now getting into the language. So this is all the symbols, a few of the symbols, I won't say all the symbols, this is a few of the symbols that are uh, commonly used in value stream mapping. Okay, I am not going to go through each one and describe what it is. Uh, these are well uh, documented, it's easily accessible on the web. We will use some of these symbols in the examples and uh, you know and then probably you'll get an idea of how the symbology works. But more than today or in this session looking at the symbols, we are more looking at how a value stream map is put together and why putting up together a value stream map and what met basic metrics we get out of it helps with the overall process. Okay. So while the symbology is important in communicating and and uh, you know getting people to understand the map, the focus today will be on the form of the map, okay, not the specific symbols. And again, I'm repeating: please look up on uh, on the references. You will find very detailed uh, definitions and uses of the symbols. So <clears throat> here is a value stream map. Okay, I'm going to explain what the components of this map are. So we look at these, so we are, first we look at the map, it contains uh, three levels I would start with. So we have the information flow level, the workflow level and a timeline. Okay, so this is one. So value stream map also captures information. Incidentally, this map is just put as an example. It's not, uh, it's not, I mean, there can be uh, issues which are, you know, does the customer, you know, communicate to IT, all those we are not taking up yet. Okay, it's just put as a, a generic example. Now. Uh, if we take process or the tasks that you know constitute the map, you can see they are uh, they are uh, represented here. So this map, this is capturing five processes. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, and for each process there is a metric that's put. This is the PT is the process time, LT is the lead time. Okay, and the percentage. CNA you see here is the number of times something that goes out has to be repeated in the process. It's 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 how much of rework happens. Fifty percent rework, very high. Seventy five percent. Okay. It's it's uh, you know, this is what happens of of how it of 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 where what goes out and comes back. Now uh, you have some symbology here. So you have here which is the push icon. Okay, showing the showing the push is all a push. From process one, process two, process three to process four, you have some work in progress here that's shown as a work in progress icon, and you have items that are waiting. Typically, is also shown. 
okay and uh, you have basic communication information from the customer where it's going what happens and how it comes back is also shown now when you go to the the timeline here what this shows you is the processing time and the lead time. okay so in this very basic value stream map you now look at the full process together okay the total you see the process time is 180 minutes and the lead time is 4657 minutes okay so there is a lot you can see that is coming out of these basic numbers so while the so while the while the processing time is relatively small the lead time in all of the sub processes are fairly large okay this is not uncommon Okay, so if you look at, uh, I mean, if we look at a building construction, it'll be, more. it'll be even more. Okay, the amount of time I do on the work phase versus the time that work is sitting idle. Okay, so this is, so what do we call this waste? It's almost like inventory, that work in progress is waiting. It's buffer, it's waiting and waiting and waiting. There's too many items of work in progress that I'm not working on it, it's just waiting for me to work on. Okay, so I mean, if you if you look at file movement, if I want to make a purchase order, the actual time for days to create the purchase order might be only like two minutes. Yeah, a few minutes or maximum an hour. The file waits for me for four days, and then once I finish processing, I send it out. It waits after me for the next person also for four days. So what is a few, like a one hour of work gets sandwiched between a lot of time before and after. So that's 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 the way one can. Look, that's that is the waste which we need to identify and try to eliminate. So here you can see the basic value stream map. What you're shown is the current state. Okay, this is now. We will go on to how to how this map is plotted. But sir, one thing there. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about percentage of complete and uh, accurate percentage mm. of C and A, mm. uh, that is the percentage of accuracy of the target. Right, right. So here that's correct. So this is the this is the percentage that's 50 percent is complete and accurate, 50 percent is not. Here 70 percent is complete and accurate, 25 percent is not. Okay. Here 85 percent is complete and accurate and 15 is not. Okay. Yeah. So I'm glad you pointed that out because so we talked about these two metrics. We didn't talk. So the next metric here is 3.9 percent is the ratio that's 180 divided by 4616. Okay, we'll come back to this. And this percentage complete and accurate is basically a multi is, is the product of all the individual percentage CIs. Okay, we'll we'll come back. So the, the reason I, I kind of give the example and then give the definition is I think it we, we'll get a chance to discuss it further. Now, now we go to what we call a future state. Okay, a future state map is where, so you can see this, uh, these kind of uh, sparkles here. Okay, so you can see this is supposed to be a Kaizen burst. So they say there are ideas that are brought in to be able to improve the processes. Okay, and different types of ideas are brought. In. And through that, you can see one is instead of five processes, they brought it down to Three, three processes similar to our online ordering where we said you know we don't need a telephone operator we eliminate similarly somehow they brought this down to three processes okay and uh, in each process so for example here it was 10 480 they brought it down to 10 240 okay uh, some of these have been clubbed together so we can't do a you know a benchmark you know side by side comparison but ultimately this if you look at the processing time it's come down to 160 okay the lead time there should be lead time is 480 activity is 19 and the percentage complete and accurate is 89.3 let me see if i yeah so if you take a look at the comparison okay this is where this is the comparison of the two processes this was the the uh, current state this is the future okay so you can see uh, the actual processing time is reduced only by about 20 
minutes. Okay, but the lead time has reduced significantly. Okay, the activity ratio has improved tremendously and the percentage complete and accurate also been improved tremendously. So, this we have looked at a generic example. Okay, we have not said this is what this is, but these are the metrics and this is the kind of uh, thought process I would like you to keep in mind.